Hey, Paul here for Retro Gaming Arts, and when the Sega CD Model 2 doesn't have power, pretty much almost every single time, all you need to do is pop one of these bad boys in, and then boom, it has power. This is a 125 volt, 2.5 amp Pico fuse. You can get these from Console 5 for pennies, and let's go pop it into the Sega CD. So in this particular video, we're only going to be talking about the Sega CD Model 2. It's significantly more reliable than the Model 1. There are different motherboard revisions, however. This first one on the right, that is a separate motherboard than these two. So I'm going to be just taking everything out of these two where it's, uh, you just remove, if you see a screw, just take it out. You got screws on the, uh, the connector slot and then you got screws that hold the heat, uh, heat plate down. And then you have these ribbon cables, which you need to remove. If you have the other motherboard revision, it'll just be some clips. They're pretty similar. But the fuse is in a different location. So that's what I'll be showing you. Um, this one on the right, this is the MK4102 motherboard. And there you see the fuse. It's just a through hole. So you just desolder it, and then you just put a new one in, just like that, and you're good. Now this one, this is the mk 4102 a, and how you see it doesn't have the fuse in the same location so we're gonna look for the fuse and the fuse is called it's the F301 is the location of the fuse so you find that on the motherboard you know you have the right spot and there it is so let's desolder it and as you see it's a little bit the, our new fuse is a little bit bigger so we're just gonna make it work but first we just gotta desolder this fuse as you see we use the the side of the soldering iron where it's uh, more hot to help more easily melt the solder to remove the solder. So that's pretty much just what we're doing on both sides. The tip of the soldering iron isn't as hot as when you move up the side a little bit. So that's what's going to help us get rid of it and just using a nice little uh, desoldering pump. And then we're just going to heat it up and then uh, wiggle it around with some needle nose pliers and pull it off. Now, for that particular fuse, a bottom piece of it actually stayed on the board, so we're going to uh, just remove that little piece. You gotta be careful not to rip anything off of the, uh, the motherboard itself, so be careful, let the heat do the work for you. So now that it, the fuse is removed on both motherboards, we're just gonna add some flux to both locations, and then we're gonna tin up our points. Uh, when when adding new components, you should always put flux and then tin it up with a little bit of fresh solder. So you, when you put your new component on, it makes your whole life easier. So there we go, flux and tinned up with solder. And uh, I'm doing it on both of them, just just because I had two, I had three to do at the same time, but that's why. So now that we have this fuse. And it's a little bit bigger and it's not going to fit straight across so we're just going to put it in a position where we can just bend it into place and we're going to make sure that it's not touching anything else so we're just going to kind of bend it around all the other contacts on the board and we're going to get it into a nice little spot and then once we get it we're going to kind of make like a hoop sort of thing going on we're getting a little hoop and then we're just going to solder that that lead right to the right to the pad and we're gonna hold it in place with the iron and then we're just gonna add a drop of solder and it's just gonna melt everything and it's gonna all go together and then we can push it down and hold it nice in place and then once we get that that first lead in place just like that we're then going to uh, we're gonna do it to the other side and we're also gonna clip off that excess lead just some nice little snips, we'll just clip that right off, we'll bend it into place and we'll get that out of there. And then we're just going to fold it over and do the same exact thing to the other side. Just going to get it nice into place, make sure that nothing is touching, because you can't have it touching anything around, so that's why we're folding it around every other contact, like a little hoop earring, but it's a fuse, you know what I mean? And we're just going to, we're going to use something to hold this down because right now the solder is hot so we're just gonna hold it down and then we're gonna remove the iron let the solder dry and then we're gonna clip off that excess and now I'm gonna show you doing the exact same thing I'm just gonna do it again on the other motherboard just so you can see 
that's my little technique is just do it like a little hoop earring and it works um, because this one it's not as straightforward as the other one where it's it's a through hole so you just desolder it and then add a new one so we're just gonna do it again real quick this one's already uh, tinned up and fluxed so we're just gonna bend this into place put it down and do the exact same thing as we just did like a little hoop earring that's all we're doing so we got that going and uh, it's bent into place now we're just gonna do the same thing we're just gonna hold it down and then push our soldering iron right on the lead right over the tinned up pad just like that gotta get it nice into place though it's gotta be very important that there's a little bit of wiggle room so it doesn't touch anything else. So now that we got that one going on, we're gonna do, oh, we gotta get it held down real nice. There we go. The tweezers really, really help. So now that that's in place, same thing. Bend the other side. This is actually a very, very easy uh, fix and I would suggest anybody to do this. Um, it helps helps with your uh, beginner soldering skills, helps with your intermediate or advanced soldering skills. The more you do this kind of stuff, the better you get at it. And that's the, that's the whole point is you just gotta keep doing it and doing it and doing it. And then also, while getting better at uh, soldering and projects like this, you also have a Sega CD that works again. So now that it's soldered on, we're just gonna snip these points off and then we're going to, uh, we're gonna go and test it. And remember, this was the uh, this was the MK 4102A that has the fuse on the bottom, and the MK 4102 is the one that has the through hole fuse. So yeah, uh, we're just gonna pop these back together real quick, and then we're gonna test it. So that was replacing the fuse in the uh, in the Sega CD Model 2. Thank you guys very, very much for watching. Thank you for checking out all the other videos, everything like that. All your support, I really appreciate it, and I'll see you guys next time.